I saw the I saw him the first time playing in the streets before the blasters or anything. We were just in New Orleans. I was looking for a record. Like in the seventies. Yeah, it's probably I have seventy eight, maybe seventy nine, something mm -hmm. like that. And there, and there was this band. There was a couple of older guys, older meaning like thirty, right? Yeah. And then and then guys who were. 15, 16 years old, and they were all playing the streets, marching, guy with an umbrella, carrying the hat through, and really playing hot jazz. So, uh, so when I saw them, they had the opportunity. Lee Allen said he knew them, and they told me to make this what, record. So you formed the Blasters because you couldn't get in the Dirty Dozen Jazz. Because, right, exactly. I couldn't find them. I didn't know what their name was then. They walked off into the street, and, and I saw them later on, and Lee Allen says, oh yeah, well, I know these guys. And then I got Sun Ra and the orchestra. I got them. I mean, they, they were kind enough to, to make this record with me. Somebody had told me in Powers to be on the last record. We didn't, it was certain, we didn't get certain horn songs on the last blaster record. They said, horns aren't too hep. And so then they asked right. me to make this record. I said, OK, I'll get Sun Ra and the orchestra. <laughs> and well, it is a pretty the strange, dirty dozen brass. It's a very strange thing. The guy's, horns. Well, the guy's not called to do backup too often, is he? I mean. Well, yeah, but that's just, I mean, the Sun Ra, most jazz that people think about now, jazz isn't, uh, doesn't have but it doesn't appeal popularly, it doesn't go out and talk at people, sing songs to people, try to get people dancing or stuff. It's more of the of playing around with music. It used to be jazz when Louis Armstrong and guys played it, was jazz, you know, like, I'll be glad when you're dead, you rascal, you da da da. That's, That's Louis much Prima. more like well, Louis Prima song. Yeah, right. That's much more like, <laughs> much, much more of the, of the, of the entertainment on it. Uh, entertainment jazz tradition is in is in rhythm and blues and then in rock and roll, not inside what you call jazz. And Sun Ra, who learned from Fletcher Henderson, always kept a show. Always, no matter how far outside, he's one of the greatest, you know, third three, whatever name you want to give to avant-garde jazz leaders. And John Gilmore and uh, Marshall Allen, guys like that in the band, are the, the guys are the founders of some of these movements. Oh, yeah. They always entertained on stage. Mm -hmm. The music was done to entertain, and now they got them out sweet basils in New York City clapping their hands. I mean, the whole sophisticated audience when they're blowing saxophones up their dresses and <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's phenomenal to see this. Show. It's just the show's so great. So if I could in any way point the finger at popular jazz, which both of those guys are doing. By the way, excuse me, I'd like to get a signal at about ten minutes because Phil's going to do some picking and grinning. Uh, oh, uh, yeah. Well, okay, I'll think about but that. Tell me, uh, <laughs> but tell me, but tell me a little bit about the, uh, I mean, about how you hook up with Sunrock, because this guy is, is a, a established jazz uh, avant-garde guy. It's very strange for you to record with him. R right. Well, is it was a pipe true? dream originally. Yeah. So, well, so what I was going to do is call him and ask him if he would help conduct a search through the junior colleges to find, in high schools, to find jazz players, kids that could play real hot jazz, because they don't play it anymore. Nobody, it's not swing music. I mean, it's, you know. You know, supposed to have, it has a different mood, a different, a different. It's jazz, mm -hmm. and uh, so when I was in Philadelphia with the Blasters, he was playing at this club. We walked inside the club, and I had no idea that anything would happen. I told some guy, I said, "Yeah, I wanted to ask him this thing." And next thing I knew, Danny Thompson from the band was standing there. He said, "You want to ask Sunra this?" He said, "You want to see Sunra?" Takes me backstage to see Sunra. Sunra, Sunra. First thing Sunra said was, uh, "I knew Gatemouth more." I know he's, he's, and I was, and he's, you know, figured I was like a rhythm and blues guy, which I, I mean, I am, but that's not what I was. Well, so wait, to he mis mistook about. you for rhythm and blues guy when in fact you were a hot jazz guy. I, I was going in as a hot jazz guy, right, <laughs> and and was mistaken as an R and B character. Happens to all of us. Understandable. <laughs> and and I said, well, what about you know Lucky Millinder and the Mills Blue Rhythm Band? So then we we started talking. Oh, wait a second, was Lucky Millinder hot jazz? Oh heck yes. Absolutely. Oh, I, like, I like Lucky Miller. I just didn't oh, know I liked Hot Jazz. I got a record by, I got, I think perhaps the hottest record is uh, Ride Red Ride. Oh yeah. By Mills Blue Rhythm Band under the leadership, directorship of Lucky Millinder. Lucky Millinder was, and that's like 1934, I think. It was on RCA or something? He'd one of the real Columbia big road Columbia. bands, you know, traveling all well, over. I know all about the, Lucky. Yeah. See, he was, yeah, that's what Lucky Millinder making his R and B. Yeah, but he was, he was hot jazz. The roots that's of what R and B. Yeah. But, but the roots are bees, and when they say the roots of jazz, we have this thing. There was popular jazz, and it stayed. Guys like Putney Dandridge, Cab Calloway is an example of the probably Wait, the most. Cab Calloway. Now you have a Cab Calloway song on here. You I got, got two. You got Minnie Moocher. What else? I got five actually. It's not Minnie Moocher <laughs> on here. It's the Ballad of Smokey Joe. It starts with Minnie the Moocher, but uh -huh. as soon as Smokey Joe is introduced, you got to write these. You got you got to liner notes, Phil, so you can get these nuances so people can understand. Well, they they'll, they put the record on. I tell the story. They listen to it. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I, when I you're done, listen to it. I heard the story and I mistook it for Minnie the Moocher. Oh well, you'll you well that's because you only listen to Sorry. to one 
fiftieth of the song, which is perhaps my fault. <laughs> it, 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 yeah. No, inside the story of Minnie the Moocher that talks about Smokey Joe. And so this is supposed to be all story songs. Mm -hmm. Smokey Joe is this guy who had lots of songs put about him. There was Smokey Joe married Minnie the Moocher. He was the cocaine dealer and pusher for Minnie. Uh, kicking the gong around is part of this song, which is where Smokey Joe runs out of drugs. He's out in Harlem looking for Minnie, who he's now shown how to do all this stuff. And then the last part of so this, this is a drug instruction record. Is that I don't what's know. That, what's what's, yeah, yeah. what's <laughs> what, what exactly does kick? I love that line. And, it means you know, take opium. Oh, I see. Kicking the funny, gong. Funny you get up and kick the gong. Address that one. To yeah. me, address that one to me, Ted. Uh, <laughs> funny you should ask Why about you kick, kick opium. No, no. Uh, kicking the gong around. Because uh, when I saw uh, Cab Calloway last year, w yeah. I asked him after the show, I said, specifically, what does kicking the gong around mean? <laughs> he says, oh, we can't talk about that. I said, yeah, give me a break. You know, it's 1986. <laughs> Just tell us. So I said, is this like a synonym for going to Chinatown, which in, in turn meant taking opium? He said, well, yeah, yeah, but we don't, we don't talk about that. It, yeah. I said, 